Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and, well, have you ever wondered what would happen if an object, specifically a planet, collided with another planet at the speed of light? What would actually happen scientifically? In this video you're going to find out and we're going to simulate this in Universe Sandbox. Welcome to What The Math. <laughs> And to simulate all of this, we're actually going to be using our regular solar system right here. And we're basically are going to slow down time and pick an object and imagine that something is going to collide with that object at the uh, velocity close to the speed of light. Not exactly the speed of light because it's just impossible to travel at that speed. But we're going to go with like 0.99999 velocity of the speed of light. And let's actually maybe pick Jupiter to start with. So let's just imagine that a planet from the outside of our solar system is going to collide with Jupiter at an extremely fast velocity. Now uh, the chance of this happening is very very low but it's not impossible. As a matter of fact um, an object such as a planet or any kind of a mass I guess an asteroid or a comet could technically reach a velocity close to speed of light if it passed by not one but two supermassive black holes. So if an object actually passed close to these two supermassive black holes that are basically Sagittarius A star, it would actually reach a velocity very, very um, close to the speed of light. So it is theoretically possible. And if such object then is propelled into the rest of the galaxy, so basically if this object leaves the two black holes that just passed by and starts sort of flying into the galaxy, uh, there's a slight chance that maybe at some point is going to encounter something that is going to collide with. And for all we know, this could be a planet. And for all we know, this actually could be Jupiter. So that's our sort of setup for the scenario. So let's actually maybe try to simulate this. And we're going to go back into our solar system. And this, of course, could happen to any of the objects in our solar system. But I just decided to pick Jupiter because it is the most massive planet. And it's also the one that is going to create an interesting array of fireworks for us. Uh, it could also be the sun, obviously, because that's the most massive object in the solar system. But in the game, the sun doesn't actually create that cool of an effect if you collide things very fast with it. So here, let's go at the time of about one second per second. In other words, it's going to be practically real time. So we're going to maybe pick a planet. And I think just for the sakes of simplicity, let's maybe pick uh, one of the planets from our solar system. Like for example, Neptune, which would probably uh, represents one of the more common types of planets we've found discovered so far, the so-called um, ice giants or super Earths. So we're going to choose the velocity um, of 0.9999 light speed. Although I think, I guess in the game it's going to interpret it as one light speed. And we're going to project this into Jupiter from, let's just say, this angle, right here. Here we go. Ready? And here it comes. We're going to zoom into it. And we're going to observe at what actually happens. Now, because of the tremendous velocity here, there's going to be a lot of relativistic effects that are going to kick in. I'm going to actually pause this for a second and let me explain to you how this would appear. Uh, from both of these planets. So first of all, you would, uh, would clearly not be notified in advance that such a massive object is coming because the information about this object is traveling at the speed of light. So uh, even before it hits this planet, uh, let's just say there's like people standing here and they're looking at the skies, they would only find out about the approaching Neptune uh, only moments before it actually hits uh, Jupiter. So uh, because the information from this object travels at the speed of light and this object is traveling at the close of the speed of light, uh, the information would be basically arriving to Jupiter only maybe minutes or maximum hours before um, it actually hits Jupiter. So you wouldn't really have time to prepare for this collision. Now to date, the fastest object um, with mass that we were able to kind of detect um, was back in 1991 in Utah, and this was the so-called oh my god particle, 
no relation to the god particle whatsoever and it was moving at about 99.999999 is like i believe 59 uh, percent of the speed of light uh, which means that basically it, it packed a lot of kinetic energy into a single proton and uh, the energy there was equivalent to the energy of essentially like a, a baseball hitting an object uh, and that's just from one atom in this case though we have all of these trillions gazillions of atoms traveling at that energy at that velocity producing this kinetic energy and they're about to hit um, Jupiter and that's going to be essentially creates very unusual effects when uh, Neptune is about to uh, when Neptune is going to collide with Jupiter uh, the effects are essentially as if these were uh, separate atoms and separate subatomic particles colliding with other subatomic particles and other atoms and simply passing through them just like this and because there is such a tremendous velocity involved uh, the atoms would not even notice each other at first uh, the atoms from Neptune would kind of pass through upper layers of Jupiter and deposit themselves into the inner layers delivering all this tremendous amounts of energy and very likely creating a lot of matter and antimatter in the process so the explosion here would be very 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 large unfortunately it didn't really happen because all of the energy just entered Jupiter and now the Jupiter is going to start releasing all of this energy that just entered it. Now, this wasn't a particularly perfect simulation of this, and the explosion is not as large as it should have been, but it would be large enough for us to see it from Earth. And so as th uh, these particles collide with the crust of, or I guess with the upper atmosphere of the planet, they essentially spread out throughout the planet and they uh, spread the energy that has been delivered to this planet and superheated dramatically. So right now, Jupiter is, uh, actually it's already lost a lot of mass because it was kind of released through energetic means, through um, basically explosions. And it's also at a temperature of about 24,000 degrees Celsius because it's um, it's received such a tremendous amount of heat from the colliding Neptune. And on top of that, the momentum that it received from the colliding planet is going to uh, knock its orbit dramatically. So it's no longer in the same orbit. Uh, as a matter of fact, it's traveling away from everything. It's traveling... Where's the sun? Let's find the sun. Uh, yeah, so there's the sun. It's actually traveling away from the solar system at the speed of about 29,000 kilometers per second. So it's going to be leaving the solar system completely. And so at this point, what's going to start happening to this planet is um, it, all of this energy is going to essentially start heating up all of the atmos atmospheric layers in, the, in Jupiter. As you can see, it's also spinning really fast. It's releasing a tremendous amount of particles um, and it's evaporating as we speak so this is uh, several minutes per second let's make this a little bit faster and you'll see how it's going to start heating up very very quickly um, expanding into a kind of a cloud of plasma similar to plasma we get on the sun uh, and just as you saw previously there there's going to be a very large streamer kind of energetic streamer that was expanded away from the planet there's actually one right here as well and that's um, opposite of the collision that the object received and this ob uh, this particular streamer is going to extend from the far side of the impact into space and release a tremendous amount of matter that is going to be superheated as well and so at this point only a few minutes after Jupiter is ridiculously hot, the streamer is right there, and it's losing quite a lot of mass. It's actually releasing a lot of mass into space, and a lot of this mass is also released through various other means, uh, like, for example, um, much of this mass was lost due to the um, similar effects we detect in the um, particle collider. So if two atoms collide at very high velocity, they will actually turn into energy, and potentially release a lot of other exotic particles as well, which is actually what would happen on tremendously large scales um, with this particular object as well, or in this case with Jupiter. So, our mass is slowly dropping. It's actually already lost two more Earths since I kind of opened this window. And as you can see, it's, it's actually significantly shrinking. If I accelerate time a little bit more in 
make it like uh, days per second, four days per second, you'll see that it's shrinking and becoming smaller and smaller because all of this mass is, is just evaporating into space. All of the energy it's releasing is because it's so hot right now. It's ridiculously hot uh, because of all of this energy that was delivered from the Neptune that was traveling at the speed of light. Um, all right, so something is funny happening with the mass here, so we're gonna close that. Um, but basically, after maybe only a few months, you'll see that, there we go, it starts shrinking, it turns into a very small object. At this point, it's only uh, a few times bigger than the largest asteroid. And it's dropping in radius and evaporating completely. So there is our Jupiter, sort of like pulsating with the remains of the matter that is still being released. And all of this matter will eventually be deposited somewhere else outside of the solar system. And as you can see, it's sort of like a ghost now. It's a ghostly Jupiter that's just left there. And it still has quite a lot of energy to release. And so all of this energy will eventually be released into outer space. And that's it. The Jupiter is gone. Now, this is not exactly uh, the most realistic re representation of this scenario. But um, in reality, anything colliding with anything else at the speed of light is very likely going to just turn into energy. And if it's a large enough object, like if it was, for example, Earth and Mars, uh, a very similar effect would occur. So colliding Earth with Mars at the speed of light, let's just make the cellar just a little bit more, um, is going to, okay, first of all, it's going to create these large chunks of stuff, but it's going to essentially do practically the same thing. It's going to turn our planet superheated, and at some point it's, go it's going to essentially turn into nothingness. Uh, and because of these very unusual effects and very unusual um, relativistic effects involved in here, it's, uh, it's going to involve a lot more other exotic stuff that we don't even we can't even imagine yet. We haven't really seen anything colliding at such speeds in such large masses, so we don't exactly know what would happen for sure. But as you can see, in this case, our Earth as it flies away from the solar system at the speed of about 122,000 kilometers per second, it's going to start losing a lot of its mass and turn into a kind of a miniature sun. Surprisingly, it didn't evaporate though. I guess for Earth in this simulation, things work a little bit differently. Well, anyway, that's all I wanted to mention in this video and hopefully you learned something from it and hopefully you enjoyed watching it. And if you did, don't forget to subscribe, share this video with someone who enjoys watching uh, various science videos and wants to learn through video games and potentially consider supporting this channel on Patreon as well by clicking at the Patreon link in the description. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Come back tomorrow to watch another video, learn something else and find out something else interesting. Anyway, space out and as always, bye bye. Let's leave the solar system for good.